President Mohamed Buhari dumped a budget of growth and sustainability. But Nigeria's 2022 appropriation bill of 16.39 trillion naira has raised a plethora of questions while offering a little basis for hope. The questions arise largely because of the assumptions on which the estimates in the bill are based. Now, Buhari presented the bill to a joint session of the National Assembly on Thursday, but without a breakdown of sectoral allocations, unlike previous budgets. We will look at the highlights on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Atabolo. Now, during the week, Nigeria's gross domestic product distribution of 774,000 cooking gas cylinders to women, diesel price, investment banking, and President Buhari's budget presentation headlined business news. Take a look. President Mohamed Buhari has presented a total budget of 16.3 trillion naira for the year 2022 to the National Assembly. The Senate President Ahmed Lawan said the National Assembly is committed to passing the budget before the end of the year. Speaking of the National Chambers, the President tagged the appropriation bill, a budget of economic growth and sustainability. The World Bank expects the Nigerian economy to grow by 2.4% in 2021. The projection is contained in the bank's Africa's Plus, a biannual analysis of the near-term macroeconomy outlook for the region. In June, the World Bank had set the GDP growth rate at 1.8%. To meet the nation's cooking energy need, the federal government has concluded plans to commence the procurement and distribution of 774,000 cooking gas cylinders with bonus to women in rural areas. The Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tolin, disclosed this at a clean cooking forum in Abuja, explaining that each local government area will get 1,000 gas cylinders as part of plans to promote clean cooking. Fuel marketers have increased the price of automotive gas oil, also known as diesel, to 320 naira per litre as further rise in global oil prices and naira depreciation pushed up the cost of importing fuel into the country. The price of diesel, which is not regulated by the government, has surged by over 40% so far this year from an average price of 225 naira per litre in January. The 2022 budget of economic growth and sustainability has a projected capital expenditure of 5.35 trillion naira, a non-debt recurrent spending of 6.8 trillion naira, and debt servicing projected to cost 3.61 trillion naira. With crude oil averaging $67 a barrel this year, the oil price benchmark for 2022 has been set at $57 per barrel with an oil production estimate of 1.88 million barrels per day. The budget proposal is based on an exchange rate of 410 naira 15 kobo to the dollar and projected GDP growth of 4.2%, while the inflation rate is 13%. But there is a proposed budget deficit of 6.2%. Two six trillion naira. We plan to finance the deficit mainly by new borrowings, totaling 5.01 trillion naira, 90.73 billion naira for privatization proceeds. President Buhari sought to allay fears over Niger's growing debt. Some have expressed concern over our resort to borrowing to finance our fiscal gaps. They are right to be concerned. However, we believe that the debt level of the federal government is still within sustainable limits. Borrowing at specific strategic projects and can be verified publicly. But a sustainability consultant would like the government to look inwards in funding the budget deficit. 
currently MDAs as well as international oil companies and all the very important organizations across the country, they've, ref they've refused to remit certain funds within their disposal to the federal government. And we know that this fund runs into trillion of Naira. So I think if the president can actually focus on getting these MDAs and IOCs and other relevant organizations to do the remittance they need to do in respect to their taxes and other obligations to the federal government, maybe we'll just be able to generate just enough money to be able to shove the issue of borrowing to the ground. With the early presentation of the 2022 appropriation bill and all things being equal, Nigeria could well be on track for a budget cycle of 12 calendar months from January to December. Messi Bokbo for Plus TV Africa. Now that report leads our discussion for today. I'm being joined by economist Tunji Andrews and Okusonya. Adewale, many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. All right, I'll begin with you. Thank you yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Let's talk, let's try and analyze, uh, you know, the budget because it has actually generated lots of concerns and uh, more reactions from uh, Nigerians. Uh, the president justified the frequent borrowings by his administration, say, by the, his administration, say the country's debt profile is still within a uh, sustainable level. What would you say as regards to that particular you know, statement of the president? Do you really think that we are clear or that we are approaching troubled waters uh, very soon? Tunji? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I'll be very honest with you. Um, my general problem with the, the budget is that year on year, it seems to be the same figure, the abs same absolute figure in dollars. If you want to, and you might do the calculations yourself, uh, check it. Uh, all the way back to about uh, 2014, 2013, the absolute figure has always been around $30 billion. Um, this worries me not because I do not think it should be spent appropriately, but it worries me because uh, it does feel like the, go uh, the, the country needs a lot more in terms of investment. Um, we, are, we are expected to grow um, anywhere between 2.5% and 4.5% depending on who you ask, uh, but I think we should be growing at about 67% to be able to meet the large growing population and also um, um, the, the, the infrastructure needs that we need across the country. We need a lot more infrastructure, so I, I think we need a lot more money, but um, if this is what we have, I think we should be able to use it um, as judiciously as we possibly can. All right, let me bring in um, Okusoya in this particular uh, discourse now. The president's um, estimate uh, is about 25% um, higher than that of uh, 2021, which was 13.08 uh, trillion naira. But then again, uh, the president is basing uh, his estimate on uh, 410 uh, naira, 15 cobalt per the US um, dollar. Do you agree? Do you really think that particular estimate is realistic? Okusoya. Thank you very much. Um... To me, um, let's look at it from the analysis because um, the problem we're having right now is the, um, the debt we are owing. And then looking at 2021 and then 2002 budget, I mean, the last budget before now is worrisome. Um, I don't think it's real because I'm, I'm much concerned about going here and there, because as at March, we have about 33.107 debt that we still have on ground. And to me, I think is a no-no for me. Mm. So what would you really say right now? This particular uh, presentation yesterday was not uh, as detailed as uh, the previous one. What does this really tell you, uh, Okusoya? Anyway, um, the first thing I will look at is our debt profile, which I've said earlier that um, is worrisome. People are, are worried about what we have on ground. And then just like uh, what I had is that we don't really have enough because people that we are working with directly, I mean, the Nigeria government are working with directly, they've not remitted what they have on ground. Let's focus on that one first. Let them come in, give us what they have, and then we can know what to do next. 
All right, uh, let's talk to uh, uh, Tunji right now. Let's do talk about the estimated Tunji. The budget proposal is predicated on an oil benchmark of 57 US dollars per barrel, daily oil production of 1.88 million barrels. Okay, exchange, like I have said, of um, 40 or 410 uh, naira 15 copper per dollar and projected uh, GDP growth rate of 4.2% and 13% in. Inflation rate. Do you agree with all of these figures, or do you really think they are realistic? That is on one side, and that if they are not, uh, what do you uh, see happening uh, come 2022? Um, so historically, you want to look at historicals. Now, um, I don't think there's ever been a time where our expectations in terms of crude oil output has ever been realistic. Um, we've always shot above 2 million barrels of oil per day, and I do not think we've ever done 2 million barrels of oil per day. But those expectations are, you know, budgetary. Um, at the end of the day, it's what we want to spend. Um, I, I want to quickly come back to the conversation of debt, and I think it's, it's a problem. I, I'm not entirely sure why the president himself uh, touched on that, because it, it's debt is bad, not no doubt, but... The, the Nigerian debt situation is still sustainable. The real issue is revenue. Um, our debt is still significantly under 30% of GDP, which is very sustainable. If you want to check it with global averages, you want to check it with uh, countries like Japan, which is doing um, over 150% of GDP, you would realize that Nigeria is in a sustainable, sustainable debt position. The issue is revenue. We have a poor revenue generation model. And the reason is because we rely a lot of our revenue on crude oil as against taxes and other internally generated uh, conversations. So for me, the issue is revenue. Ta debt, I mean, if you look at it, it, it's fine. And that is the reason why we still continue to get acceptance when we go to the world uh, to borrow. Uh, our last um, uh, uh, euro bond was oversubscribed. The next one will be oversubscribed because we are still in a sustainable place. But if we want to really have the conversation, it is really about our revenue, which it brings us to that $30 billion on a regular basis. If you want to ask me what the shortfall will be, it will be what has always been for the last maybe six, seven years. We will end up coming back sometime around you know, April, May, and we'll have to have a supplementary budget and we'll borrow a bit more. Um, I think that is the model Nigeria has continuously used, but uh, if we want to ha really have a conversation, let's talk about revenue. All right, Tunde, you've talked about revenue. Let's stay on that, uh, Tunji, rather. Let's stay on that for one minute and talk about uh, what we are not doing right. Over time, uh, Nigerians have, you know, have um, talked about, or the, the president administration have talked about um, diversification of the economy, moving away from uh, you know, just mono economy, you know, and of course, exploring other aspects. Over time, we have um, increased uh, VAT and, uh, and other um, tax uh, bases. Uh, what else do you think we need to look at you know, to talk more about generating uh, income internally away from uh, you know, the regular you know, oil uh, you know, revenue and all of that? What can we do? Because, of course, the government seems to know what is to be done, but we're seemingly not doing what we should do. Um, the problem is expanding the tax net. And I do know that those in um, appropriate authorities are doing what they possibly can to be able to expand the tax tax net. You see, the problem is uh, we have a very low tax base in Nigeria, a very, very low tax base. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I was hearing it, it was something around 5%. We should be pushing it upwards to uh, somewhere around 20 to 25% to be able to get the kind of revenue we really seek to be able to run the Nigerian economy. Um, and the other problem, again, is that uh, if th these people who are in the informal sector in Nigeria are taxed informally, so there are these informal sector ways of taxing themselves that are being spread around uh, the informal sector that is not getting into government coffers. I think government needs to you know, find a way to be able to make sure that each and every Nigerian that pays a tax for putting their stall or putting their shop or selling on wherever they are selling their, their, their wares, should be able to pay taxes. And if those taxes are paid, it goes directly to government co coffers. All right, um, Okusoya, very quickly, let's talk about uh, you know, sectoral allocation. In as much as um, the, the federal government, or the president, rather, was not particularly uh, 
particularly uh, detailed about it. You know, what should we be looking at? Uh, looking at how far we've come from 2020 or the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and of course uh, the you know similarly uh, insurgency that has you know skyrocketed and almost every other day. What should we be focusing more uh, sectorally in Nigeria? If we were to look at it uh, and we talk about agriculture, the level of agriculture in Nigeria is very, very low because um, we really focus on crude oil, which is not forthcoming any longer, except if we are deceiving ourselves in this country. Um, if the government can really focus more on um, agriculture, I think it will be of help to the nation and to the world. All right, uh, let's get some um, fi final words from, gen from you gentlemen right now. I'll start with you, uh, Tunji. Uh, you've talked about uh, you know, the, the federal government expanding the tax net. Uh, in Okusa, you talked about agriculture. What more should we be doing, even as much as we might increase uh, taxes and, of course, explore agriculture, if we don't um, sort out the issue of um, insecurity that has actually bedeviled you know, uh, food prices, mm -hmm. of course, across Nigeria, how do we see ourselves doing in 2022? That's a difficult question, but um, I think what I can say is uh, we do not need to increase taxes. Uh, what we need to do is widen the tax base appropriately to be able to uh, reach more Nigerians, uh, and then we would be able to have the significant amount of revenue that we should be having as a country. But the insecurity issue is a problem. It is affecting inflation. Um, I do not know what the cure is, but I know that... Um, the reason why the people in government are in government is to fix such issues. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to fix it as soon as possible. All right, Okunsaya, last words from you as we wrap up this particular session. Um, the issue of insecurity as well, too. Sorry that I skip it the other time because I only talk about agriculture. I think uh, the issue of insecurity is the main problem in Nigeria government need to focus on now if truly we want to move forward as far as I'm concerned. All right, thank you, gentlemen, for sharing your thought in as much as we had limited time to look at all of the issues, but we do appreciate it. Uh, we were joined by uh, economist uh, Tunji Andrews and, of course, Okusoya Adewale. Many thanks once again, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. All right, moving on. On Business 101, event planners are evolving new ways to stay relevant in the business world. We'll leave you with highlights and what they have going on concerning that. Unfortunately, that's the size of the show for this week. Let's do it again next time. I am Justin Akadonye. Bye for now. The business of event planning is gradually gathering momentum since 2019, when the entire world was hit by the effect of COVID-19. If there is one critical piece of information sought after by event players at this time, it is the knowledge of how to survive and navigate the storm. Interestingly, that knowledge came in the way of event practitioners who recently benefited from the knowledge sharing training and strategy session, which focused on embracing transformation, the game changer. The session, tagged Esmeralda Masterclass 3.0, was put together by the Association of Event Vendors in Nigeria. Organizers speak on the essence and how active players can buy into it, as well as the future of the industry. Change is a constant thing in life. Fortunately or unfortunately, pandemic has made us to realize that we have to change and evolve in the ways we are doing things. My advice to the industry is to see the future and almost picture whatever would evolve after this system and position themselves in such a way that what happened to a lot of us during the COVID era would not repeat itself. Hence, we must always change and evolve along with the situation of the country. We are beckoning on the government and also begging. We understand that things are biting hard and affecting everybody. But we are begging them to look into this and see how they can help us cushion this prices a bit because it's affecting us. Imagine where you have to tell a client that social price is what you have to pay, and the client is saying it's too much, I can't afford you. How then with this event premiums eat? How then can they cope? We encourage um, event vendors generally, you know, to stay at the top of their game so that they can transform and get to the next level. You know, they don't have to be stagnant in one particular place. They have to open up their new horizons out there for people to look out. So yes, so um, I want to use this opportunity to thank the government so far for how they have helped the event industry. 
the exchange rates, the increase, it, it is not favorable at all. Like we have things that we want to bring in, but we cannot bring. These are things that can help transform our business, to take our business to the next level. But we can't achieve these things because of the cost of dollar.